for the salt that went into passing this bill. Mr. Speaker, sir, the reason that I thank the Senate is that I have absolutely no doubt that the dissenting voices that we have on the floor of this House, the sentiments were mirrored in the Senate. But what the Senate did was that they came up with a bill that not only would look to the development of the country, to all the regions of the country, but also an instrumentality to unifying this our country at a time where our country is at its most polarized. Mr. Speaker, sir, my colleagues before me have spoken to the merits of the bill, and they've spoken to environmental degradation and so on and so forth. Only today, or a couple of days ago, Mr. President decried what was going on in the Lake Chad Basin, and he spoke about environmental degradation, and even went beyond the Lake Chad Basin Commission to ask that countries around the world come and support the Lake Chad Basin because of the effects of climate change. Mr. Speaker, sir, the Southeast loses on a daily basis a lot of income to poor road network, which derives from the fact that we are indeed an infrastructural decay, which derives from the fact that we're a country that is on a very bad belt as far as um, ecology, ecological issues is concerned. But Mr. Speaker, over and above that, I've heard the um, argument from some of my colleagues, and they say that should we have development commissions Please, please silence honorable members, please. Order. Order, please. Please, honorable members, take your seats. Silence, please. Please, please. Honorable Boma, can you resume your seat, please? Please. Honorable Abdul. Abdul. DG 2019, please take your seat. He has heard. And I've heard some of my colleagues oppose this. And the reason they oppose this is they say, should we have development in every part of the country? Mr. Speaker, so the GDP growth of our country is put at 1.9%. Ghana has the fastest GDP growth. And do you know why? Because Ghana came up with a policy that said, one village, one factory. It is the one village, one factory policy of Ghana that has jump-started the Ghanaian economy in such a way that we have seen the growth that we see. What is wrong, Mr. Speaker, sir, with us developing every region? Let me speak to the Northeast, and I do not speak to the Northeast because I think I want to come up with the argument of what is good for the goods is good for the Ganda. As a house, and I was one of the proponents of the Northeast Development Bill, we realized that for Nigeria as a country to wholly develop, that it was important for us as a country to make interventions in the Northeast because if one zone develops and another one does not develop, it affects the bottom line for the rest of the country. Mr. Speaker, sir, only recently we've had conversations about interventions of 10 billion, I think it was, to the Northwest because of security issues. And Mr. Speaker, all of us as a house stood up and spoke about that intervention. The reason we did it was through no fault of theirs in the North, my colleagues on the floor of this house came out and said, economic, came up and said that all the economic uh, activities in the north had ground to a halt. Mr. Speaker, sir, my concern is that if we decide to fractionalize this country and if this parliament, which is supposed to be the unity, the unifying force for Nigeria, decides that the southeast does not deserve development, or that the Development Commission for the Southeast is not right. Then, Mr. Speaker, sir, what argument can we have for the other interventions that we're going to make in all the other regions that have this problem? As far as I'm concerned, Mr. Speaker, sir, there is nothing in this bill, in this development of the Southeast, that takes away from the development of any of the other regions in Nigeria. All we're asking for is a legal instrument that helps us to drive our development in such a way that makes us 
one, country, one part of this country that helps the entire country to get up to what it is we want to see the country as economically. So when people start to come up with all these arguments about the North, the South East not requiring the interventions, yes, let's even speak about restitution. Mr. Speaker, sir, over two million lives were lost in the Biafran War. I, I do not speak to that, but if restitution were to be the issue, then let us have that as, as restitution. But for me, Mr. Speaker, what I employ is that my dear colleagues, Look at this as one region that is part of six geopolitical zones that needs to be developed alongside all the other regions. And if all these other regions are good candidates for that intervention, then the South is no less. I rest my seat.